thanks to Shaper 3D for sponsoring this video. Today, we are gonna model this desk with an attached filing cabinet on the side and some hairpin legs. And we're gonna show you how to set this up so everything will scale together when we make adjustments to any single parameter, which is extremely useful for quickly showing clients the changes that they wanna see and how those changes can affect the entire piece. So if you haven't yet, be sure to use the link in the description to download your free copy of the Shaper 3D parametric modeling beta so that you can follow along. And then later, if you wanna to upgrade to the pro version, you can save 10% by using my code Bell Published Creations 10 at checkout and unlock the full potential of this really amazing program. Um, anyway, guys, enough talking. Let's get started. As usual, we'll be modeling in millimeters and I'm gonna lock my grid size to one millimeter. Now we're gonna start by defining the total height of our desk. So to do that, let's go and add a construction plane and we're gonna keep the default type as offset. And now we're gonna pick this bottom plane click next and then we're going to drag this up 750 millimeters and click done all right now let's go to our plane and actually a quick way to get to that plane is just double click on this navigation cube right here there we go all right let's start sketching on this plane and we're going to switch over to the rectangle tool to draw our desktop so starting from the origin and we're just going to drag this out like that and we're going to make the width 1800 millimeters and set the depth to 700. All right, now let's spin out of this view and we're gonna pick this closed surface and extrude this downward 25 millimeters. And there's our desktop. All right, I just wanna mention that since my last video was uploaded, Shaper 3D added a bunch of new features to this beta and I just wanna show you guys real quick what those are. So if we go to the items manager, you can see that when I made this extrusion, the sketch is automatically hidden. But if we bring that back, you'll see that our dimensions are always showing now. And we can actually change these dimensions without going into the sketch, which is really nice. And they also made some changes to the font. So now these measurements are a lot easier to see. But another major feature that they added is now we can go to the history sidebar and rename these steps, which is really important for parametric modeling because as we start building out our model and this list start getting longer and longer, it can be really difficult to figure out what each step is for. So it's really nice to be able to come in here and rename these. So let's change this plane to overall height and let's add a couple asterisks in front of it so it can quickly catch our attention. Let's change this sketch to desktop width and depth and the extrusion to desktop thickness. And you probably notice that when I change the name of the sketch, the same name will be reflected in the items manager as well. And this only happens for the sketches right now, um, which I don't mind because I'd rather rename this body to desktop instead of the desktop thickness over here. Um, but I do wish that the planes could rename automatically as well because I can't think of an example where I would want these to be named differently. Um, but anyways, I digress guys. Let's uh, flip to the bottom and we're gonna pick these four edges and we're gonna add a bevel on the bottom. But instead of using an automatic chamfer, I'm gonna change the type to two distance chamfer. And I'm gonna go up 22 millimeters this way and then 30 millimeters this way. So that we end up with an angle of 36 degrees, which I think it looks better than a regular 45 degree bevel, but that's just personal preference. Um, all right, so now we're ready to move on to making the cabinet. And what I want is for the cabinet to always be flush against these three edges right here. So that for whatever reason in the future, if I want to change the size of these bevels, our cabinet will always scale with it. So to do that, let's uh, add a new construction plane. And this time we're gonna change the type to parallel to face. And let's zoom in here. And this is the face that we're gonna pick. And then click next and flip to the bottom to pick this edge right here. And we're gonna drag this point until it snaps to this corner and click done. So what we just did here is if we change the size of this bevel, you can see that our plane is going to move along with it. All right, let's undo and start sketching on that plane. And the first thing we wanna do is zoom in here and start sketching a line at the origin. And we're just gonna drag this to the right. And the length of this guy doesn't matter, but what's important is when we select this line, we should see this horizontal vertical constraint right here, meaning that this line is perfectly horizontal. And once you see that, let's turn that into a construction line and then lock it in place. 
All right, now to make sure the side of our cabinet is flush to this corner right here, let's draw another line starting from this corner all the way down until it snaps to our ground line. And when we hover over this point, we should see these two constraints. One is the coincident constraint, and the other is the perpendicular constraint, which means that our line is perfectly vertical. Now let's pick this line and turn it into a construction line. And we don't want to lock this line down because when we change this bevel here, we want this line to be able to move from side to side like that. All right, now let's go back to our sketch, go to a front view, and let's switch over to the rectangle tool and we're gonna start sketching a rectangle on this line and just drag it down. And let's double click on this rectangle and use the horizontal vertical constraint to lock down its orientation. And now we're ready to give it some dimensions. All right, we want the bottom of the case to be 100 millimeters off the ground. And then we want the top of the case to be, let's do 70 millimeters from the desktop. And let's make the total width 450 millimeters. All right, now to define the thickness of our panels, let's use the offset edge tool and make sure that the type is set to loop. And we're gonna pick one of these lines and just drag it down 20 millimeters. So like I've complained in my past videos, even though we just defined the amount of offset here, we still have to come in here and manually set the gaps which, you know, it's not a big problem for direct modeling. We don't have to do this step, but it is really important to do this for parametric modeling. So I hope Shaper 3D get this fixed because I'm gonna keep mentioning this until this is fixed. Um, but anyway, guys, let's uh, switch back to the line tool and we're gonna draw some lines from corner to corner to make our miter joints. And now we are ready to extrude these. So let's rotate out of that view. And remember to extrude these, we can't pick all four at the same time and extrude them together because it's just gonna create a single body. So what we wanna do is pick two faces that are not touching, extrude those first, and then pick the other two faces and then extrude those, which will give us the four separate bodies that we want. All right, let's spin to the back. Um, so for the depth of this cabinet, like I said earlier, I want it to be flush to this edge right here. So what I normally would do is go to the extrusion properties over here and change this extent to point. But unfortunately in this beta version that I'm running right now, which is version 6160, there's a bug where it's not giving me the option to choose the feature that I want to extend to. So what I should be able to do is pick this bevel face right here, and this panel will extend to the closest point, which would be this edge. But unfortunately, when I pick this, nothing happens, right? So the workaround for this right now is change the extend to object, and now we get the option to pick our object. So click on select, and then pick our bevel face, click done. And that cuts our panels like this, which is obviously not what we want. But when we go and change this extent back to point, it fixes that. So now if we go to a left view, you can see that our panel is flush against this back edge. So chances are, by the time you're watching this video, this problem is already fixed because there <laughs> seemed to be this pattern where right after I release a new video, they'll come out with an update that fixes all these problems and give us new features. Um, but just in case that the bugs is still there, this is the workaround for it. Okay, now let's expand the extrusion properties for our other two panels. And we're gonna change this extend to object. And for the object, we can pick the back face of either of these side panels and click done to finish that guy up. So basically our two side panels are tied to this bottom edge right here. And the top and bottom panels will follow whatever the side panels will do. So if we go to our chamfer and start making adjustments to it, our case will update with it. All right, let's undo that. And now let's hide the planes and sketches that we don't need and flip to the front because I want to add a bevel along the inside edges here. But this time we're just gonna use an auto chamfer so that they're 45 degrees, but we're still going to keep three millimeters of flat around it because I just really like the way that looks. Okay, that's it for our case. And now we need to add some supports in between here, which is pretty straightforward. All we have to do is select this top and then we're gonna use the isolate tool to hide everything else. And we are gonna start sketching on the surface. All right, let's uh, sketch a circle right here and we'll make that diameter 30 
And let's zoom in here. And we'll set the distance between the center to edge at, I don't know, 50 millimeters. And let's do the same thing for this edge as well. Okay, now let's uh, spin out of that, pick that surface, and we'll extrude that up to some random length. And make sure to click on this little button right here and select new body so that this guy doesn't automatically get combined with the top panel. All right, now let's uh, turn off isolate and bring everything back. And we're gonna go to the extrusion properties for this guy. Let's minimize the other stuff. And we'll extend to object. And then for the object, we'll pick the bottom face of our desktop and click done. All right, so we've got one support. Now to create the other three, we're just gonna use the mirror function. But first, we need to create some mirroring planes. So go under add, construction plane. But this time for the type, we'll use mid plane. And for this first one, we're gonna use this front face right here and then this back face. And click done. And then create another mid plane. And this time we'll use the two side faces and click done. All right, now to mirror this guy over, come under transform, select mirror, and then we'll double click to select that guy and then pick either of these planes that we just created and click done. And then we'll repeat that again, but this time we'll select both of these guys and then pick the other plane and click done to finish those guys up. All right, now if let's hide all these sketches and planes again, and if we make any changes to our chamfer, let's see what happens. All right, everything is moving together. And if we change the overall height. All right, that looks pretty good. And let's see what happens if we change the dimensions for our case right here. So if I change that to 100, it'll extend with it. All right, so we're making pretty good progress and you can see that our list of stuff is getting pretty long. So let's come in here and start renaming some of these. And you know, even if we don't rename every single feature, we should at least do it for the ones that we'll likely reuse later on and add some asterisks in front of those so we can quickly find it in the tree. And while we're at it, it's also a good practice to group the features in the items manager into folders. And the reason why I didn't put these two planes in there is because we're likely gonna use them later. So for this one, we are going to rename it the same as over here. So it'll be cabinet X mid plane. And this one will be cabinet Y mid plane. So pause the video here if you need to and get your workspace organized. And once you're ready, we're gonna start making our drawer boxes. Um, so for these, let's zoom in here and also hide our two mid planes. And we're gonna start by making a new construction plane. And this time we're gonna offset from this face right here, click next and push this plane back 37 millimeters and click done. All right, now let's start sketching on this plane. And we're gonna start by drawing a rectangle from corner to corner like this. And let's double click on this rectangle and then use the horizontal vertical constraint to lock down its orientation. And this rectangle is what we're gonna to use to help set the gaps for our drawer boxes. So let's double click on that and we're gonna turn it into a construction geometry. All right, so for this cabinet, we're gonna have three drawers. So let's draw three rectangles inside here. And this bottom one's gonna be larger because we're gonna use it to store some file folders. Based on my past experience building something like this, we're gonna set this height to 250 millimeters. And if we're using those undermount drawer slides, we're gonna set this bottom gap to 14 millimeters and then the side clearances to 13 millimeters for both sides. All right, and we're gonna do the same for the top two drawers. So set the side clearances to 13 millimeters for those as well. And then let's set the gaps to the top of the drawer boxes to 30 millimeters for all of these.
And lastly, we want these two top drawers to be the same size. So to do that, let's pick the vertical lines on both of these and then use the equal constraint right here. All right, so let's spin out of this and let's change the overall height of our desk. You can see that the bottom rectangle stays the same size while the top two will scale together but remain the same size. Let's undo that and we're gonna extrude these three guys back 12 millimeters. All right, now before we move on to creating the side panels, we need to cut some dados in here for our drawer bottoms. So let's pick all three of these and then use the isolate tool so we hide everything else. And then we're gonna come to the side face and start sketching on it. And let's choose the rectangle tool and we're gonna draw rectangles like this on all three of these drawer boxes. And then let's set some dimensions for these. So all of these are gonna be six millimeters wide by six millimeters deep. And the distance to the bottom will be 13 millimeters. So let's repeat that for all of these. Okay, now let's spin out of this and we're gonna pick all three of these surfaces that we just created and then we're gonna push them out. And just like what we've done with all the extrusions up to this point, we'll come over here to the extrusion properties and then change this to extend to object. And then for the object, we're gonna pick the face on the opposite side and click done. This way, no matter how long these panels get, our cutout will always extend to this face. So we're ready to move on to making the side panels for our drawer boxes. And I'm just gonna keep the joinery relatively simple by using rabbits because I don't want this to turn into a one hour video. But if you are interested to see more complex joinery like dovetails or box joints, I have another video specifically on that. So be sure to check that out. All right, let's get back to this. And and we're gonna start creating another sketch on the side face here. And this time we're gonna draw another rectangle. Or right, let's go to the top one first. And we're gonna go from midpoint down to midpoint and just drag it out to the left like this. And we're gonna repeat the same thing for all three of these. And then let's zoom out, let's double click on all three and we're gonna use the horizontal vertical constraint to lock down its orientation. Now to define the length of these, let's turn off isolate and bring everything back. And then we're gonna draw a line from this top corner down to this bottom corner. And let's pick that line and turn it into a construction line. All right, now let's uh, select our sketch over here in the items manager, turn on isolate again, and all we have to do is set this distance right here. We're gonna do 25 millimeters. And then let's pick these horizontal lines right here. And then we're gonna use the equal constraint. So now no matter how deep our cabinet is, our drawer boxes will always be 25 millimeters from the back edge. All right, so now let's spin out of this and we're gonna extrude all three of these 12 millimeters toward the inside. And now let's uh, go to the front and we're gonna start sketching our dados for the drawer bottoms. And just like earlier, we're gonna set these dimensions to six by six and then 13 millimeters to the bottom. And then let's uh, spin out of that. Oops. <laughs> and then pick these squares that we just created and push them out to get them cut. And just like earlier, we'll go to the extrusion properties and change this to extend to object. And for the object, we're gonna pick the back face of our drawer box and click done. All right, now let's uh, bring everything back and then hide all the sketches and planes that we no longer need. But then we're gonna bring back this cabinet X plane because we're gonna use this as a mirroring plane to mirror these three guys over to the other side. So select those three and then come down to mirror and then pick this plane right here and click done. And then now to mirror these front panels to the back, we can't use this cabinet wide mid plane because our drawer boxes doesn't sit in the middle of our cabinet. So instead, um, let's hide these planes 
we actually need to create a new plane. So let's select this guy and isolate just that and then add construction plane, change the type to mid plane and we're going to use the back face and front face and click done. All right, now let's bring everything else back. Choose these three panels here. Go under more mirror and then pick that new plane we just created and click done. All right, there we go. Now to make the drawer bottoms, what we have to do is isolate our side panels. So pick all six of those, isolate, and all we have to do is zoom in here, pick these faces in the dados. Before we extrude those, we have to change this from offset face to extrude and then pull those out. And make sure to click on this little icon and select new body. And then once again, we'll come to the extrusion properties and we'll extend to object. And for the object, we're gonna pick this face in the opposite dado and click done. All right, there we go. Now let's bring everything back and we're actually gonna filter this to only show the bodies. And we're gonna select all of these bodies for our drawer boxes and isolate those because we need to cut our rabbits. So to do that, let's go under tools and use the subtract function. And we're just gonna pick everything right here except for the drawer bottoms. Let's flip to the front and pick these. So what we want is for all the front and back panels to be plus signs, and then all the side panels to be minus signs. And the last one right here. And click done. There we go, we've got our rabbits cut out. All right, now all that's left is to make some drawer fronts. Once again, we'll bring everything back and let's hide all the planes and sketches that we don't need. And for the drawer fronts, we're just gonna start sketching on this front face right here. The process is pretty much the same as what we did for the drawer boxes. So let's start by drawing a rectangle from corner to corner. And once again, we're gonna be using this to set our gaps for our drawer fronts. Let's double click on that, turn on horizontal vertical constraint, and then double click on it again to make it into a construction geometry. All right, and we're now just gonna isolate the sketch so we can see what's going on here. Like what we did earlier, we'll draw three rectangles in here. And this time we'll set all the gaps to three millimeters. but then we'll set the height of the bottom drawer front to 285. And to ensure that the top two drawer fronts are the same height, we'll pick both of those lines right there and then use the equal constraint to finish that up. And now let's uh, spin out of that view and we're gonna select all three of these and pull those out 20 millimeters. All right, now let's bring everything back and let's double check to make sure that everything is updating together, which they are. And let's change the height and see what happens. 650. All right, everything looks really good and everything's updating the way they're supposed to. Now, before we move on to the legs, let's start renaming some of these features and get our workspace organized. All right, we are ready to move on to the most exciting, or at least I think so, the most exciting part of this whole video, and that's how to model some hairpin legs. And I've never done this before, it was brand new to me, so it took me a little time to figure out how to do this correctly. And it can get a little bit complicated, so if you wanna learn how to model this, I highly recommend not skipping around. And even if you're doing direct modeling, I would say 95% of the steps are exactly the same. Um, but anyway, I already did some quick Googling to get some basic dimensions, so let's flip to the bottom and we're gonna start sketching on this face here and we're gonna use the line tool to sketch a random upside down L shape so something like that and let's double click on this and use the horizontal vertical constraint to make sure our lines are perfectly horizontal and vertical all right, let's set the length of this to 130 millimeters, and then the length of this line will also be 130 millimeters. Oops, let's drag this guy back down and we'll set that to 50. And this will also be 50. And let's switch over to the circle tool and we're gonna sketch three circles in here for our mounting holes. Let's pick all three circles 
and use the equal constraint so that we only have to set the diameter for one of these and the other two will update automatically. And we're gonna set this distance here to 10 millimeters from center to edge and same thing for this one. And then we're gonna repeat the same thing for the other two circles as well. And the last thing we need is to set this gap to the edge of our desktop. I don't know why that dimension went all the way over there, but let's set that to 60 millimeters and do the same thing to this. A spin out of this and we're gonna pick the surface and extrude that up three millimeters. And don't forget to click on this little button and make sure that it's a new body. All right, so for this base plate, if we change our desktop bevel, it should move along with that corner, just like that. Now we can finally move on to the legs. So let's hide this sketch. Actually, let's rename this sketch to base plate definition. All right, now let's hide it. And we're gonna start another sketch on the top of this base plate. And the first thing we wanna do is draw a line from this midpoint all the way to this opposite edge right here. And then draw another line from this midpoint to the opposite edge. And these are the two lines we're gonna to use to help us define the position of our rods. So let's pick both of these lines and we're gonna turn them into construction lines. All right, now let's use the circle tool and we're gonna draw three circles. One's gonna be on this edge right here, another one at this intersection, and a third one on this line. And just like earlier, we'll pick all three circles and make them equal to one another. And we'll set the dimension for just one of these. The distance from center point to edge is going to be 25 millimeters and the same for this one as well. All right, so like I said earlier, these three circles are going to be the position of the rods on this plate. And now we need a way to define the angle of our leg like this. So in order to do that, we actually need to stay in this sketch and first sketch a line from this center point to this center point. And we'll turn that into a construction line. All right, now we can exit this sketch and we're gonna add a new construction plane. And the type for this one will be perpendicular to edge. And for the edge, we're gonna select this line that we just created and click next. And then for the center point, we're going to click on the circle so that point is placed at the center of that circle. And click done. All right, so let's start sketching on this plane. And the first thing we need is to actually define the ground line. So let's move up here and we're gonna zoom in and sketch a line on this axis. Um, like I said earlier, for these ground lines, the length doesn't really matter, but we wanna make sure that we see this horizontal vertical constraint so we know that it's perfectly horizontal. All right, let's pick this line, turn it into a construction line, and lock it in place. All right, now let's go back down to our table and actually we need to move out of that view so we can draw a line starting from the center point of the circle and pull it up like that. All right, now let's click here to go back normal to our sketch and pick this line and use the horizontal vertical constraint to make that line vertical. All right, now let's grab this point and we'll just drag this up. And from here, we're gonna draw a horizontal line from this end point and make sure that's horizontal. And then we'll draw a third line connecting back to this end point down here. All right, double click on this so that all three lines are selected and we're gonna turn all three of them into construction lines. All right, so for the distance here to here, it should be half of the thickness of our rod. So that would be 6.5 millimeters. And then we're gonna set the length of this guy to 100. All right, so this is a sketch that we're gonna use to define the angle of our leg. So let's exit out of that and we're gonna rename this sketch to leg angle and length definition. Before I forget, I'm gonna rename this one too, to leg position definition. All right, so we're not quite done yet. We actually need to create another construction plane. And this time we're gonna set the type to three points. And for our three points, the first one is going to be the center point of this circle. 
Second point is the center point on this circle. And then our third point is going to be this vertex right here and click done. And this is the plane that we're gonna to use to define the curvature of our leg. So click on that and start sketching on it. And the first thing we wanna do is draw a line from this bottom point here straight down and make sure that it's vertical. And we're gonna set the length of that to 25. And let's turn that line into a construction line. Okay, now switch over to the circle tool and we're gonna draw a circle starting from this end point down here. And the diameter of that will be 50 millimeters. All right, switch back to the line tool now and we're gonna draw a line from the circle down to the center point on this circle. And we'll do the same thing over here. So starting from the center point of this circle and go up to this circle here. Let's uh, zoom in here. We'll pick this circle and this line and make them tangent to one another and do the same thing over here, tangent. Now let's use the trim tool to remove the bottom half of the circle. So now just grab any of these points and drag it around and make sure that nothing is moving because like I said in my previous video, sometimes when we use the trim tool, it'll also delete our constraints, which we definitely don't want. So now if we go back to our leg angle and length sketch, if we change this, everything else should change with it. That looks pretty good. If we change this, that's scaling together as well. All right, so now we have everything we need, we can start creating our actual leg. So to do that, we're gonna go to tools and use the sweep function. And for our face, we're going to pick this circle right here click next and then for our profile we're going to pick this thing that we just created and click done all right if we zoom in here we actually have a small problem actually let's hide some of this stuff that we don't need so you can see it better so you can see that this end of our rod is not matching our base plate so to fix that let's go under tools and we're going to use the replace face tool all we have to do is pick this face here and then the face on our base plate and click done. There we go. All right. Now we just need to create this third support rod. So to do that, let's bring back our leg position definition sketch and then the angle and length definition. And we're gonna use the sweep tool again. And we're gonna pick this circle right here, click next and then it will be this line here and click done. All right, so because of the two different angles we have here, there's actually a small little problem right at the end right here. You can see there's a sliver of material right here that's showing up. Um, we can get that fixed pretty easily. Just grab the edge and we'll add a small fillet right there. So let's do three millimeters. Now let's grab both of these bodies and then use the union function to combine these into one body. So now we have this additional edge that we can use to add another fillet to clean up this joint. Um, so with the actual hairpin legs, they actually have welds down here anyway to cover up this joint. So I think what we have here is actually pretty good representation of that. Um, anyway, let's uh, zoom out here and we're gonna pick our leg assembly and our base plate down here and use the union function to make them into one body. And let's also hide all the sketches and planes that we no longer need. And while we're here, let's uh, pick all the sharp edges and corners here. And we're just gonna give it a small round over. All right, now let's bring back our cabinet Y mid plane and we're gonna use this guy to mirror over our leg. So let's pick that guy and this plane and click done. So once again, if we go up here and change our desktop bevel, both legs should adjust together. So that looks good. And oops, let's flip to the front. And if we change the overall height, to 650, our leg will shorten instead of moving down with it, which is perfect. And if we ever need to make any changes to the angle of this, we just need to go to this leg angle and length definition 
and we change that to 200. That looks really good. I actually like this. I'm gonna keep it this way. Um, anyway, let's move on to making the legs for the cabinet. And honestly, I wish there was a way to take everything that we've done over here and just you know move it over to the cabinet side and make some adjustments and make it fit. But unfortunately, I could not figure out a good way to do this and still make it fully updatable. So we're gonna have to redo those steps for our cabinet legs. But hey, on the bright side, we can quickly review everything we've done. So let's uh, flip to the bottom side of our cabinet and we're gonna start sketching on it and just like earlier we'll draw our upside down L shape double click to make sure all the lines are horizontal and vertical we'll set this dimension to 130 this one will also be 130 50 millimeters for the shorter sides and since these are shorter legs, we're gonna keep this distance here. Let's do 15 millimeters. And let's zoom back in here and we'll draw our mounting holes. Make all three of these equal to one another. And we'll just set the diameter for one of these. And then set some of these distances from center to edge to 10 millimeters. And once again, do it for the other circles as well. All right, exit the sketch, let's spin out of that view, extrude that up three millimeters, make that into a new body, and let's hide that sketch. And actually let's come down here and we'll rename that sketch to cabinet base plate definition. All right, now let's draw on the top surface of this base plate. And we're gonna start by making two center lines. Turn those into construction lines. And one circle on this line, one circle on the intersection, and another circle here. Make all three of these equal to one another. Set the diameter to 13. And then the center to edge distance is 25 for both of these. Before we exit that sketch, let's go back to the line tool and we'll draw a line connecting the centers of these two circles. Turn that into a construction line. All right, uh, let's spin out of that and exit the sketch. We'll add another construction plane. The type will be perpendicular to edge. We'll pick this line, click next, and then this circle right here, click done. All right, and we're gonna start sketching on this plane. First thing we're gonna do is come up here and define our ground line. Turn it into a construction line and lock in place. And then we're gonna draw a vertical line up and then horizontal this way, and then back down to our starting point. All right, double click to select the whole thing and turn it into a construction line. We'll set this gap to 6.5. And since this is a pretty short leg, we don't want this to be very long. So let's just do five millimeters for now and see how that looks. All right, now let's exit the sketch and we're ready to make our next plane. And this time the type will be three points. First point will be the center point of that circle, and then second point is the center point on that circle, and our third point is this vertex right there, and click done. And yeah, you can see how severe that angle is. So let's, um, let's actually go back to this, and we're gonna unlock that dimension. I'm gonna drag this point this way instead, and then let's set that to 15. So I think that will look a little bit better. Actually, let's do 30. Yeah, that looks a lot better. All right, let's start sketching on this plane now. And we're gonna sketch a line from that point down 25 millimeters. Pick our line, turn it into a construction line, and then we'll sketch a circle on that end point with a diameter of 50 millimeters. Switch to the line tool and we'll draw a line from this circle down to the center point of this circle down here. And we'll do the same thing 
over here. All right, pick this line and the circle, make them tangent. Pick this line and the circle and do the same thing. All right, now use the trim tool to trim away this bottom half. And just drag these point around and make sure that everything is still constrained. Okay, everything looks good. Let's exit the sketch and we'll switch to the sweep tool. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Let's pick that circle, click next, and then click our profile and click done. All right, now let's uh, let's rename this sketch to cabinet leg definition. And this other one will be cabinet leg angle and length definition. Let's uh, hide this guy real quick and we're going to use the replace face tool to match up this face to our base plate and click done. Bring back our sketch right here to make our support piece. So go to tools, sweep again and use this circle, click next and this guy right here, click done. Okay, let's uh, hide all the sketches and planes that we don't need. Similar to before, we're just gonna pick this edge and add a small one millimeter radius. And then let's pick both of these guys and use the union function to combine them together so that we can pick this edge and add a small fillet on there to clean up this joint. All right, let's zoom out a bit. And we already have the cabinet Y mid plane here. We're also going to bring back the cabinet X mid plane. Oh, before we mirror things over, I forgot that uh, we need to pick this guy and our base plate and combine them into one body as well. And we should also come in here, select our sharp edges and corners. And add a small fillet. All right, now we can start mirroring things over. Let's uh, go to our mirror tool and we're gonna select this leg and this plane, click done. And then we're gonna repeat that, select the mirror tool, pick both of the legs, and then this time we'll mirror it about this plane right here and click done. All right, so while modeling this, I just remember that on shorter hairpin legs like these, they usually don't have this third support piece on there, which is why this looks kind of weird, right? The good news is we use parametric modeling to create this, so we don't need to redo anything. And a great way to use the timeline over here is if we come in here and pick the support rod, you'll see that our timeline will update to show only the steps that were used to create this guy here. So we know that it was created using the sweep. So what we can do is click on this little circle with the three dots and click on suppress. So what that did was that it removed the step and all the steps associated with it without actually deleting anything. So let's say for some reason our client looks at this model and thinks, uh, those legs look a little weak, can we strengthen it? We can actually come over here and unsuppress it and bring that back and show them what that would look like. Uh, anyway, we're finished with modeling and now let's just double check to make sure everything's updating correctly. If I change the overall height, the length of our legs and cabinets are updating correctly. Now if I change the bevel, everything's scaling together as well. All right, let's undo that. And let's go to our cabinet dimension. And if we want to change that bottom edge to be lower, our shorter legs are updating correctly as well. All right, everything looks good. Let's uh, hide that support rod on these shorter legs because I really don't like the way they look. Okay, so we are done with designing the sky. I think this was probably the first time that my computer actually had to do some thinking while I was making these updates. But that just goes to show how heavy this model was. Um, and yeah, if you guys enjoyed designing with me, be sure to leave me one of these. And if you haven't yet, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video.